Are you a veteran who served in combat after the Gulf War and was discharged between September 11, 2001 and October 1, 2013? If so, you may be eligible to apply for PACT Act benefits during a special enrollment period that ends on September 30, 2023. The PACT Act expands benefits and care for veterans exposed to burn pits, toxins, Agent Orange, radiation, and other environmental hazards while serving. Act fast. Even if you applied before and weren't eligible, you may be eligible now. The deadline to apply is September 30th. For more information, go to va.gov slash pact. That's va.gov slash pact. This town needs an enema. Find us on the web at mbradio.us. I want to make it clear that the views expressed by our hosts are not considered the official stance of MBR views. Remember, this is all about having fun and enjoying the ride. Welcome to the morning show. You're here with me, Jack Blaze, the H Train. Joining us in studio today, we got V and phoning in. We got Bo from DV Radio. What's going on, fellas? Hey, hey, hey. Yo, 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 Bo. How are I'm, you, brother? I'm up, but I'm not awake. <laughs> He's got an IV of caffeine going right now. He wakes up slower than I do. I've only been awake like 20 minutes, so. Damn, it's skippy. always a treat to have Bo on, but the main reason why I wanted him to come on, and he can stay however long he wants, but the main reason why I wanted to bring him on is, <clears throat> Bo, tell us a little bit about the septic, the, the septic issue. Uh, yeah, the DV farm located in Gilson, New Hampshire. It's a, uh, a long-term rehab for homeless and addicted veterans, the problem child's. Uh, or the problem children, excuse me, child, this isn't a word, is it? Um, of the VA who have uh, went through everything and then some, and they just cannot get straight, cannot get right back uh, with their lives uh, without the uh, addictions and they can't overcome homeless, homelessness. Uh, so that's what we do at the DV farm. It's only farm in name. Uh, but, uh, and don't quote me on this because I have really bad memory, but I believe just over a little over a year ago now, give or take, uh, we found out the septic system needs to be re uh, redone completely, uh, basically from the ground up, literally. And uh, for those that don't know, uh, DV Farm, the homes that are there now, the veteran house and the house for DV6 and Google, uh, who are husband and wife and run DV Farm, were built. Way back, you know, back in the Stone Age when the wheel was created, apparently. So to make everything up to today's code and standards and all that good stuff, because no septic uh, septic repair man or repair company will touch it until it's done up to today's coding standards, it's going to cost between twenty five and thirty grand. Uh, so yeah, we've been trying to raise twenty five grand for about a year now. And I don't even think we've hit 5% of that goal. So that's where we're sitting. And we can't continue the mission of helping our homeless and addicted veterans until 
that entire septic system is redone. And the thing about New Hampshire, for those, again, that don't know, the, the ground freezes every winter. So if we don't get it done by the time the ground starts freezing, that cost of 25 to 30 grand goes up exponentially. Right. So yeah. that's that's the issues we're having at the DV farm presently. And that's why uh, we've not had any veterans for, like I said, I, I believe and just don't quote me on that, but I believe around a year, year and a half, give or take. So I'd like to take this point and throw it out to our viewers and our listeners. That if you have some people, some contacts in the area of DV Farm, that you guys reach out to see, you know, if, you know, maybe, maybe we can get some volunteers. Maybe, maybe we can uh, reach out to Home Depot because they have that thing where they volunteer yeah, yeah, and they take. Um, you know, they go to veterans' houses and stuff, right. and they 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 what is it? They build modifications. I think that's where we need to go. So if you're one of those people that work with the mission continues, if you know how to do the Home Depot thing and get volunteers, this I, I think this is the time where we really need to band together, either as people or we go to other nonprofits. Hey, look, you know, I, I get every nonprofit has their like budget, their thing. Sure. But and I mean, even we, you know, we yeah. already know that we have to pay monthly on this, you know. Right. But this is more important. And for me to say that maybe that will boost people and it's not like i'm doing the the uh, the oprah and the rock thing you know <laughs> what i mean we're, we're we're trying to get we're trying to get this veteran nonprofit thing set up and it's been like since i've known since i've known but i i know it's been at least six months since this has <laughs> been like this and yeah. now it's just getting even more dangerous like you yeah. said yeah, and I, I, I'm glad you brought up a nonprofit. I don't know if I've mentioned that. It is a 501c3 nonprofit, uh, like I said, located in Gilson, New Hampshire. We have no federal funding or any grants. Uh, we have been looking into grants and uh, trying to get some help to do that. We have a grant writer that's supposed to be helping us, uh, but we, we just haven't got any uh, got any in the uh, works, per se. As of right now, we do. I do have a couple other people that I'm working with to hopefully do something with the septic system. Uh, but as you guys know, with organizations and nonprofits, like you were talking about, it's not just okay, cut and dry. Let's do this right here, right now. You have to go through a board. You have to go through this. You have to go through that. So by the time they're able to say yay or nay, it could be the winter time, and we still might need more help. Uh, so that's another thing. If you're afraid that, you know, you're hearing this and somebody else is going to get it. Don't think like that. Um, anytime not, and, and this goes for anything that's raising funds for any nonprofit. It's just not DV farm. Anytime you see somebody sharing something on social media or talking about, Hey, we need funds. We need donations. Don't think, well, if I don't give my dollar, somebody else is going to cover me because somebody else might not cover you and they might not reach that goal and they may not be able to do something. You can't rely on the betterment of society. You, you just can't uh, as much as we want to do that. Um, and that's another thing. Share. Share the hell out of any donation fundraisers that you can because you never know who's going to see that. I mean, right. uh, for lack of better persons out there that I could name Elon Musk or Bill Gates could see it and be like, yeah, let me give them that 25 grand today and they can get it done. Right. You never right. know who's going to see it. Yeah. Well, just think it, it, 25 grand would come easily if we lived in Ukraine, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when I'm telling lies. Right. Let me, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm not in a dentist's office yesterday. And uh, well, that must have been before our own. <laughs> Dude, you have no idea. The, the, yeah, that's a the whole different story. But I was in the dentist's office, and you know, my dentist was like, What's up? And I'm like, Not much, sure as hell not Hawaii. And she just started talking, and we both looked at each other and we're like, Okay, 
so we 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 were on the same page. We were on this like conspiracy thing, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I don't think it's a conspiracy thing." And so we created a new word. Okay, me and and Blaze. The new word is instead of conspiracy, because when you start speaking conspiracy, everybody's like, "Okay, right. he licks windows." Got it. So when they talk about conspiracy, now we will say allegedly. 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 Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, thank, thank you for informing you, uh, me that we came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to know when you were involved in something. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah, played a part. You know, the three, the three pillars of our government is conspiracy, idiocy, and redundancy. So, yeah. You know what? Talking about conspiracies, we've got a brand new show oh, I've got the tonight, Friday. I just said it's Friday tonight. Okay, anyways. Tonight... It's Conspiracy Friday with Brian Roof. It's a new show that they're debuting today. So make to sure to out. tune in and do not forget your tin cone hats. <laughs> got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah, I got hey, Bo, I was going to tell you, I just had a great idea for if you don't get that done until the, until the ground freezes, you just go out there and you build you a giant bonfire and let it burn for a couple of days. And then, then you dig. <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> it's it's funny you say that it, it's been a couple years now but um and i can't remember if it was the septic system or something else that they were quote unquote repairing or jerry rigging or what <clears throat> but it was it was like november december like basically winter middle of winter type deal and um they were out there i believe they got out there at like four or five in the afternoon and didn't get finished until like five or six in the next morning because the ground was so frozen. It took them that long just to dig maybe a foot, foot and a half. They didn't have a backhoe at the time. So it was shovels and post hole diggers. And oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. You could always do a, a roast a pig and, and you know, the ground will be nice and hot when the, you know, when <laughs> meal and... <laughs> you gotta feed the workers somehow. <laughs> <laughs> First, you got to dig the fire pit, though, for that. And that, that yeah. Yeah, that one's up. Wow. You know. Not quite as deep as it, you know. Because of society Except and all the cairns that are around, I guarantee you, you start digging in the back of the house, they'll call it like a welfare check. So she, they think that you're digging like graves and stuff. I, right? I, I would completely right. believe that. Yeah. 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 I mean, right. for for a while, one of the uh, alleged conspiracy theories was <laughs> was that we had an entire gun range at the farm and i was like take me to it i want to go <laughs> right. to that <laughs> gun range oh, like is, it was great uh, um i don't even think six and google have been to their own gun range so <laughs> dv farm by day dv by um yeah, it was it was it was funnier coming in in my mind, and now I lost it. <laughs> Glitch, glitch in the system. Right. <laughs> my gauge is broken. <laughs> I don't mean to get that fixed. <laughs> uh, you know it's fun. So, um, what was it? Wednesday? Or no, it was Monday. Monday, I parked on the side uh, side of the road. Visiting the VFW, doing the uh, guitar for Gret Vets, um, are not Soldier Song Voices. Soldier Song of Voices, superb. They taught me a bunch of stuff. Anyways, can't come back out to go grab my water, and either a car hit my side window, or they yeah. hit it with a bat. Yeah. And yesterday I found <laughs> out that you have when these parts come in, you have to paint them. Really? Yeah. It, it was like charging me $140 to paint. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to be that car that's going to be like all black and then like grayish on one yeah, side. A little, a little Krylon. That, yeah, like, yeah. Just a little can, just can spray paint. You'll be fine. Okay. Be fine. All right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm so going to believe you. I've been meaning to ask you. It's, that's a one-way street. So you parked illegally <laughs> on the street? Or how, how do they get your driver's side mirror? How did that work? Side street, or well, if it's well, one way, you can park on the right side, yeah, yeah, the right side. So then your your passenger side is, is hanging out, basically, right? 
Is that a one way south? Or yeah, north? I think yeah. so. Okay. Or west, actually, towards. The I didn't pay attention west. to the one way thing, but I think he's right. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> but uh, uh well this yeah. podcast has got interesting um yeah. <laughs> i just want to scold you though and say if you'd parked in the back like i told you to uh yeah well uh, <laughs> uh bo you're gonna stay with us right yeah until i fall out <laughs> <laughs> we'll circle back and pick you up it's early <laughs> yeah, until, until this until this ruck pulls me down i'll, I'll stay in all right, we're going to go on a music break, everybody. And when we come back off that music break, we'll be hitting into Blaine's take. So whatever you do, stay with us. Don't go away. You're listening to the show that highlights all the nonprofit programs out there beyond the VA. You're listening to the morning show with Blaze, B, Bo, and H. When he got killed, he he was killed, uh, and the army disagrees with this. But the, his man told us that he was killed while they were looking for Bert, Bo Bergdahl. He was the guy that deserted. We had a very close relationship, and I miss it every day. There's just a constant barrage of of things that come up that I think, oh, I need to tell Darren that, or Darren would do this, or. He and his buddies, we would pick them up at 29 Palms and bring them home, and I would hear the stories and how of the firefights, the stuff that they don't tell you on TV, the true stories, and I'd sit in the hallway with the pillow crying. So when he got back from Iraq the second time, uh, the PTSD was pretty much out of control, and uh, they fed him the, the, the typical, hey, this, take this, take this in the morning, take this at night, and multiplied it out. You know, if this wasn't working, if one wasn't working, well, he had two more. A couple months later, it's still not working, add three more. One night he called me, he, w he was going to stay at base for the weekend. We had a conversation and probably within eight hours, he was dead. I am the mother of Corporal Benjamin Kopp, who was an Army Ranger that was killed in action in July of 2009. The day after he landed at Walter Reed, he was determined to be brain dead. However, the brain death um, qualified him, if you will, to become an organ donor. And so his, um, all of his major organs, bone, skin, and tissue were donated. And his heart is literally still beating today in a woman from Chicago. You know, I believe it was Emerson, the poet, um, who stated that the one thing about life that he's learned is that it goes on, whether we want it to or not. Right down what's itching inside my mind It's been too long since we have talked About nothing at all Wish I could call I know you're lost Please don't you worry There's no need to hurry Just stay strong
Hey, welcome back to the morning show. You're here with me, Mr. Jack Blaze, the H Train V, and we're being joined by Bo from DV Radio today. So how about that Shannon Book song, man? That's a, that's a rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I meant to ask you, Bo. How you know? Um, I know how you guys feel about that North Richmond because you guys talked about that the other day on your show. That's on uh, every Saturday, Barracks Talk. Mm-hmm. And it comes on at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So that's yeah, around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the show, you know, and uh, hey, congr- they don't make fun of me because I'm lost all the time. Congratulations for doing that math in your head, man, in public. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad he done that math because I'm sitting here going, I don't know how far behind Mountain Time is, man. <laughs> I, I can't do those conversions quick like that. I dude, have I'm to look it up. Yeah, that's impressive. Dude, and, uh, I was at the Sam's Club the other day, and to get on the internet, you have to do the new captcha thing. And the uh-huh. new captcha thing is the addition and not the, not not the, the words. Easy letters. <laughs> Man, well, I thought the words were bad. I'm sitting here doing <laughs> five, six. You know, the easiest ones are like one and two, but then when uh-huh. you get to like, 36 and 12 what the hell you know it's it, it, for me it's hard they've got one now where it's an image with one puzzle piece and you have to put the puzzle piece <laughs> in the space that is missing and i've done one uh it's been about a week ago now because i was helping a friend set up a, a website and all through my media company and <clears throat> i i'm not joking you i went to six different websites to log in and every website had that that puzzle capture and every single one of them was this Hawaiian vegan salad tofu pizza puzzle. <laughs> it was <laughs> all the same one. It was, it was disgusting. I was like, they really <laughs> like that pizza. Don't they? By the way, the OG cigar tender on Instagram says that that's a great song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is a good yeah. song. Now, is is that somebody you guys work with or yeah shannon book cool. he's a singer out of texas he's he's touring right now doing thing 15 year well i don't know if he's 15 years i know my john knows him for 15 years but he is a he is a veteran 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Combat veteran at, at, at that, okay? And he was in the Navy, but we 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 call him a Marine because he was a doctor, anyways. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, get us hooked up with him. I like that. That's an uh, that's an emotional ride, but it, it's uh it's one of those that I think we all can relate to, no matter what yeah, branch yeah. of service or if you you actually deployed or not. That was a uh, that was one of them songs. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. Well, you know the thing. You know what that song reminds me of? Do you remember when we were in high school, and the Jars of Clay came out, and I Jars do. of Clay was a Christian group, and they Mac. they they got on the pop chart, and everybody's like, "Oh my gosh, that's Christian!" What? You know, everybody's like all like worried, you know, like surprised and stuff. That's what this reminds me of. This reminds me of, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, I like this song. I like this song. And then they find out that he's a combat veteran. They like it even more. Yeah. You know, I mean, look at um, what is it? Uh, Anthony Oliver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oliver Anthony. I mean, look at, it's not just the song. It's he was a combat vet. Yeah. Was he? Yeah. See, I don't really know that much about Oliver Anthony. I've been. Honestly, I I have to say I really uh, uh, am happy about the fact that he's come out and said, you know, hey, you guys are all just what you're doing with my song is what you're doing. That's not what I intended, and and y'all are all stupid, basically. <laughs> so, well, dude, I think it's I funny. I appreciate that. And you know, he he said on the Joe Rogan show that when he did all these <clears throat> all these interviews and stuff, not once did he say that he was doing like the super bowl like somebody put that out that he was going to be singing at the super bowl you know Mm -hmm. he said that if if he was asked that he'd sing for furry you know kind of thing but he from what i heard he's not confirmed that he's going to be singing at the super bowl but he finds it funny that on the internet everybody's like commenting and saying stuff like this Uh, i don't the uh, internet is its own little creature, man. It just makes up and does whatever it wants. Yeah, to. if it's on the internet, it's definitely true. Yeah, I don't know if <laughs> Oliver Anthony is uh, a, a veteran or not. I don't. I don't even know if he served. I, I haven't seen that, but I do know that he's not for either side. He's he's for the people. He's for right. everybody. He doesn't he doesn't like to play the games, you know. And I know I made a huge long ass. Uh, tweet on x and that makes no sense uh the other day um because i had seen uh what's his name he's from the office rain wilson or something was like uh he he nitpicked the one lyric out of the entire song about you know if i was going to make a song i wouldn't write about fat people getting uh welfare i'd write about the basically the rich people uh that are hurting the little people and i'm like you obviously didn't listen to the song because right. that's exactly what he's saying. And, and that's pretty damn easy to say when you're not a songwriter and you never tried to write a song. So. Yeah, and you're a rich guy that the right. song's about that's taking you know a hold of the system and using it to your own advantage and not actually helping people. Yeah, yeah. So the um, Barracks Talk mm-hmm. this, this Saturday... How do you guys come up with these topics? Does some the the p- people just like oh we got a we got a phone call? Oh God, I didn't do it. All right, I'm pushed, yeah, really. I'm from Colorado. Hey, good morning. Welcome. You're on the morning show with Jack Blaze. How you doing? Hey, Jack. This is Brian from Project Die Hard. Hey, good morning, Brian. Hey, hey, hey. What you got for us? Well, I need everybody's help right now because we have a little problem. Okay, hit me with it. Some some bureaucrat in Springfield, Illinois, has determined our mission is not worthy of not having to pay property tax on the 20 acres and 10,000 square foot building that was donated to us. Hmm. All right. Now, I can't speak to that because I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I have no idea about the laws. Well, unfortunately, I do. Okay. 
Yeah, every year in Illinois, every nonprofit has to file to not have to pay property tax. As it is here in Colorado. Right? Uh huh. So now we just got notified two days ago that our application was denied. Hmm. And we cannot appeal it until we get the assessment. That could go as high as thirty thousand dollars in property taxes because it's Illinois. So let me just let me just understand. So you are here in Colorado, but you have land that was donated to your your nonprofit up in Illinois. Is that correct? Well, we're based out of Kentucky. Okay. And yes, we had land donated to us in Illinois. Okay. Okay. ProjectIHeart.org is our website. Our goal is to place one of these facilities in every state. So now, every state has their own rules, right? Sure. And we do everything to follow the rules, to be up and up. We've been financially transparent from day one. You know, we, we're, we're doing this the right way. Right. All right. Well, hey, Brian, thank you for calling. I really appreciate it, everybody. If you have the the means to help with volunteer hours or the means to uh, volunteer, you know, to to donate, you can go to projectdiehard.org and you can donate, and we'll keep spreading the word, Brian. Maybe if also if you're an assessor and maybe would be willing to do yeah. some assessing work. Yeah, like you know the Home Depot gift card thing. Yeah, that mm-hmm. you know that's uh, that's one thing that I would look into. Also, is the um, Home Depot they have a, a project with like Mission Continues that that can probably help you with that. Uh, we have applied. We okay. apply every year. Okay. We haven't we haven't been accepted yet. Okay. I don't know why, but we do apply every year to Home Depot, to Lowe's, to yeah. Menards, to everybody. Can, hey, hey, Brad, can you tell us a little bit about what you guys do, Project That Hard? Well, uh, our, our whole mission is to bring hope to veterans by providing hope, skill training, counseling, therapy. Yeah. Our nice facilities skills. will be those hubs where a veteran can come for a day, a weekend, a week, a month, all the way up to a year if need be. That's right. awesome, dude. That is incredible. Yeah. Brian, you're doing great work, brother. We we have to go to the next segment, but we will keep sharing that information. Once again, everybody, that's Brian. Also, if you have like uh, legal services, you could offer to help out with uh, with Project Our Heart. If you if you're a legal, you know, a lawyer or have yep. uh, legal expertise, definitely get in touch with them. That would be great. There we go, sir. Brian there Gibson from Project Our Heart. Thank you. Th- thanks for calling, brother. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Okay, now it is that time. Blaze takes. I don't know what he has in order for us today. This segment brought to you by Soldier Songs and Voices, an organization dedicated to helping veterans tell their stories through songs. Some victories take longer than others. Some losses we don't share with our brothers. Some words are just too. Oh, man, I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, welcome to Blaze Takes. So today I'm actually going to talk about something a little serious. Oh, want, okay. Okay. I want to talk about self-care for people because it's it's really, um, for a lot of people like myself, it definitely does not come naturally to ha- to take care of Preach yourself. it, preach it. Yeah. You know, especially, you know, in the military and the people that, that join the military, we're, we're kind of taught that, you know, you put you put others first. So um, it, it, it becomes it feels very selfish when you don't put others first. But it's it's very important because if, if you're especially if you get it, find yourself in a dark place, you, no one else can pull you out of that. The only thing I mean, people can, you know, 
give you help and find give you tools to help you pull yourself out of that but if it's coming from inside the only way to fix it is from inside and so you have to take care of yourself and you have to be able to assess the world around you and realize the things that are not helping you you know um and just so you know the you know you may be in a relationship of you know a romantic relationship a business relationship whatever and the fact that it's not serving you and not helping you out does not mean that you know that's the fault of the other person it's just you know sometimes things are are incompatible and 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 you know um cannot be good for you even though it, it's not malicious you know somebody's not trying to trying to hurt you trying to steal from you trying to take from you or whatever it is that that's going on in your head and so being able to recognize that and, and recognize that you need to to do something with yourself um, even as selfish as that may feel you you have to do it you have to take care of yourself because nobody else is going to take care of you that's so true that's so true and you know there was a uh, a statistic that Elvis Duran in the morning show shared a couple of weeks ago. And I brought that up that people that have lots of friends, I mean, like, like a tribe, lots of friends, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like barracks talk people like that, that has a, has a tribe. They are more happier. They are not sitting there like questioning your, you know, questioning themselves because they can reach out. I've already reached out to Bo one time and, you know, he helped me and yeah. he didn't realize how important that was. I'm telling you, but you know, you gain more confidence and you're not sitting there thinking bad thoughts about yourself when you're constantly having people come up like, dude, I never had somebody bring me Starbucks before <laughs> other than my wife. She she told me no. I I have brought you bar at Starbucks before, but you didn't like it. I'm like sorry, you know. <laughs> but that counts. He, you know. But see, mm -hmm. it's so important that little gesture. That's so important because that that showed me that you you were mutually in this, you know, friendship. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think that's one uh, one thing that a lot of us lack is we forget that they're just like us if. If they're not reaching out, then you need to reach out and you need to to start that kind of thing. I mean, I don't know. Am I getting on my soapbox, Bo, or do you feel the same way? Yeah, I mean, not only is self-care important, it's just self-recognition at least once in a while. I mean, I if you're a creator, if you're an artist, you're going to have self-doubt constantly. It's it's Absolutely. it's it comes with the territory, right? Yes. And then yes. as a civilian, as a veteran who just has a quote unquote average normal day, a nine to five job, a, a family, husband, wife, whatever, you're going to have even more self doubt because you think you're not providing enough. You think you're not good enough for your spouse. You're, you're not doing enough for your kids, this, that, or the other. And the problem with that is society and social media. Um, and people need to back off of that. They need to take a break from everything that isn't important in their life. Social media doesn't dictate your bills. Uh, society doesn't put food on your table. You need to sit back, get away from all that, and look at what you actually are doing. Because you're doing way more than you ever realize. I'm not joking. It's 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 hard to fathom how much you actually are impacting one person's life, let alone four to five people's lives that live under the same roof, right? right. Uh, and and you were talking about the whole tribe thing and all that. That that's a whole other uh that's a whole other bag of beans too i mean I, I put up a post uh yesterday or the day before asking no matter how insignificant you may think it is has dv how has dv radio if anyway helped you and a few people have commented and i'm sure some people won't comment because it's too personal or they don't want to open up you know that bag of demons or whatever and that's perfectly fine 
That's perfectly fine. Um, but at the end of the day, that's what keeps me going. That's, that's what for me is worth more than a paycheck is knowing that whether it's one person or a thousand people or a million people, somebody's laughing to forget whatever screwed up demons they have in their head at any given moment during that one or two hours on Saturday during barracks talk. That's all I give a damn about. Well, and that's just it, you know, which kind of goes back to the tribe thing. And all we're talking about is, uh, you know, sometimes you have to find something to be able to get out of your own head sometimes, Mm -hmm. whether that's music, podcasting, you know, family life, sports, anything to kind of, you know, get yourself out of your own head for a while, because there's a. There's lots of bad stuff that can happen if you just sit and sit around and, yeah, and isolation in is your killer, head the man. whole time. It's a, yeah, it's a deadly killer. Yeah, and when, when, when you sit there and isolate, and it just expounds upon itself, and it gets really, really, really ugly, really fast. You know, and camaraderie, just being around other people, and 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 trying new things, and getting out of your comfort zone, that is critical. I mean, it's so critical, mm-hmm. and, and it's especially for vets and everything. But I mean, any person that 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 is having a, a tough time. It's just critical. Yeah. And I, I don't want to, you know, go political and that this next part is not political, but you brought up, you know, self isolation or isolation in general, look at the whole, uh, when the world imploded and rolling a lockdown and all that good stuff, look at how high suicide rates got, look how high de- depression, uh, diagnosis got, it got so much worse. It's not even funny. And it's, it goes back to years ago for the kids that don't know. It's called cabin fever. Cabin fever is real. It is very, yeah. very real. You will go absolutely crazy if you're not doing something, uh, whether it's new or it's something that occupies your mind or that gives you that little bit of, oh, I just done that. That feels great. If you've yeah. never done something with your own hands or your own brain, you don't understand that feeling. I mean, you remember when you all got your first paycheck when you were 16, 17 years old, what, whatever age that was, man, that was the best feeling ever. Right. And <laughs> yeah, no, he's exactly right. Yeah, absolutely. He's exactly right. You know, when, when, uh, when they had that thing with COVID, mm-hmm. um, it, the one thing that COVID did that I think we all can agree on, I, I don't know in your area, but we have the VA hospital mm-hmm. and it was in Denver and they moved it to Aurora. And like the best thing that the VA ever did was do the virtual connect for like psychology, you know, shrink, you know, stuff, mm-hmm. stuff that you didn't have to do in person. Yeah. Cause I was talking to somebody about that. that like you go to the, you go there now, you'll you'll be able to find a parking on the first floor, mm-hmm. automatic. And I find it so funny. They've got four floors, and there's people that literally like they 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 tighten so that they can get onto the first floor. And there's like four floors that they can go on. What why? You and know, an elevators yeah. right? You know, they've got like yeah. this SUV where this mini. Cup thing yeah, supposed to be. Compact car yeah. supposed to be, and in the, I agree. I go right past the first level, straight down to the next level every time. No matter what time of day it is, skip yeah. that level. But you know, back to the to the thing, uh, the self care thing. I heard something that I thought was just incredibly insightful yesterday, um, and that is, there's two ways to define strength, and and how you define your strength will will determine what your mental state is it most people a lot of people especially those of us who have served we define strength as the ability to be able to take it i can take anything you can dish out because i'm stronger but another way to define strength is to be able to stand up and say hey this isn't right hey this isn't what i need you know to be able to stop taking it to stand up and say no i'm not going to take this anymore that that is a different way to define strength and a healthier way to define strength because you know taking abuse hardship you know whatever you want to call it just trying to take it and sustain that is just not 
really humanly possible for long periods of time. And that will just break you down and put you in a worse place. But if you're strong enough to say, hey, this isn't what I need to be doing. Hey, this isn't what is good for me or for the people around me. Right. I need to change this. That's a different way to define strength. And it's much healthier and will put you in a much better place. I thought that was just profound when I had never thought about that before. Yeah, we we definitely have a skewed uh, view in our society of what strength is, especially for our youth. I mean, mm -hmm. boys, boys think that strength is being macho and carrying, you know, being strapped and, you know, killing people, whatever. They, they, they're just their their view and their 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 whole outlook on what a strength is and what a man should be is just in the toilet. And, you know we get a lot of flack for our generations on all oh, you're too masculine and you don't show emotion. I would tell you right now, I know more 60, 50, 40 and 30 year olds that will cry at the drop of a hat for something that means more to them than anything than any of these kids will today. Heck yeah. yeah. And still, that, yeah, I'm still a mama's mama's boy. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm straight up a mama's boy. I call my mama mommy. I mean, yeah. I don't care. I don't <laughs> give a damn. You can make fun of me all you want. I am a mama's boy through and through. Um, but also, you know, I know our our generations were taught, you know, you don't take flack from nobody, you know, name calling. You just let that roll off your 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 shoulder. It ain't nothing but a name. It, it shouldn't bother you. And you need to be tough both mentally and physically and emotionally. But they also taught us there's a time and a place you need to let it out. Yep. And I think that's one of the greatest things that our generations taught us was it's okay to cry. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be angry, but you got to have that time and place. Just like there's a time and place to be funny. Cause you know, I might be sitting at a funeral and cut a joke. That to me is a time and place to laugh. Right. right. Others that might not be right. Mm -hmm. um, and don't fart at the funeral either. That, that doesn't <laughs> go over well either. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it's silent. It's fine. Yeah, like, it's, people at least look up. Sometimes you think it's silent, but it's deadly. <laughs> but no, yeah, I, I think uh, these kids today, and it's not too far off from you know the outcast of our generations. Except, like you said, they weren't strapped, man. I mean, the, it, it was coming around, but today it's so much worse, and they don't care. They'll walk into a store and they'll grab whatever. And that's cool. That's strong. That's tough. Nah, you a pansy. You're a pansy <laughs> straight yeah. through and but, through. I mean, but that, that kind of leads into another thing is, is talking about upbringing and stuff is, you know, mm -hmm. when we were growing up, there was a time and place for everything, including violence. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody talks some crap to you and they went over the line, you punched them in the mouth, you know, yeah, don't, don't talk about my mama. Right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, you know, and worst Born case scenario, scary, you got like a, you know, Saturday D hall or you were suspended for a couple of days. Well, now they, they you know, make a federal case out of everything. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of and I'm not excusing anything, but if I'm going to end up with a police record for punching you or shooting you, shit, I might as well shoot you, you know, and, and, and I, I think that that whole completely clamping down and trying to tell kids these days that violence is never acceptable except for when you're Afghan in Afghanistan, you know, or, you know, when we're in, we're at war for 20 years, but you, you can't be violent because you're here in the States. So, I mean, it just, it, it sends but, but you know what's so funny? mixed messages. You know what's so funny? All parents, if there's like a fight or whatever, after the fight, all parents are saying, I'm glad that you defended yourself. Especially if they get beat up. I'm glad that you just defended it. That's the first thing that my mom said to me after I got my butt kicked. Yeah, but not I'm anymore. glad that you defended yourself. Not anymore though. Not now today, no. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> I can make you that angry or you know, it's yeah. just, violence is Even never the the easier answer. word. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's I'm smart enough. I'm good enough, and God darn it, people like me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have kids, but if I had kids today, I would tell them the exact same thing my mom told me when I was in school. Don't you start a fight, but if you've got to finish it, finish it. Yep. And my mom wasn't one to be violent, but as she's gotten older, she's gotten pretty more violent. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but if I had ever started a fight and I came home and told her that I got in a fight and it was my fault, she'd have whooped my hind in. She'd right. have yeah. beat my, <laughs> she, she would have. Right. Um, and that's a, a thing about today. I mean, you hear about helicopter parents and, and this, that, and the other, but they're not being disciplined. And this whole time out and taking things away and uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, uh, I was gonna say while you're thinking about it, Scotty Pig wants to know where where where's your uh, where's your face? Well, um, it's hiding because <laughs> I have a face for radio. Um, radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely do. Um, but no, that 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 stuff doesn't work. It really doesn't. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you've got the parents that don't teach their kids what earning something means. They just hand it to them. And right. that's where the entitlement comes from. Right. Yeah. So at that you're the precious angel, you're supposed to have anything you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, if, if I was loaded and I, I had kids, I absolutely would give them a lot of stuff, but at the same time, I'm going to make them earn it. I'm not just going to hand it to them, you know, right. uh, I would spoil them. Yes, absolutely. But I'm just, they're going to, they're going to learn. They're going to learn that money don't grow on trees and you're not entitled to this new iPhone GX 50,000 that just yeah. came out and yesterday. Like earlier, bro, when we grew up, there was a little thing called consequences. Yeah. yeah. Mom gave you what she could and she tried to do the best she can and dad. But if you, if you effed up, guess what? you <laughs> there's gonna be consequences you know yeah i mean Bo, well, i'm an educator i've been an educator for 32 years and mm -hmm. i think the biggest one of the of the myriad of things that we do doing wrong now in public ed is uh taking away the corporate punishment because yes it, it wasn't a silver bullet but i tell you what you thought a little you thought twice about okay I, you know, i'm not gonna punch johnny again or, or put him in a chokehold because man i got three swats yesterday the other day and that man that that yep. I'm, it still hurts i'm gonna tell you right now uh i don't know how many people do it but thank you for being an educator honestly because i don't know how you do it right. <laughs> in today's world anyway um especially in today's world you know before yeah. we go any further instead of us hitting a commercial break um blaze v and bo bo you're gonna still be with us right yeah we man. have a speaker that's gonna come on and you guys can talk with him and stuff so, ladies and gentlemen, it is the interview of the week. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, once again, the interview today is Tony Brown. He is a, a speaker. He's a, a developer. He has his like, own video game. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about what he's doing. Tony, thank you so much for being on with us. I we really appreciate it. What's up? What's up, world? What's up, brothers? Not much, but I snapped to attention when I seen that hat because I thought you was a That's drill right. sergeant or something there for a second. I was like, wow. damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody, everybody say the same thing. This is my little my little uh, trademark right here. I, I like it. I like it. Wait, where did you serve, brother? Uh, 08, well, I, I joined in 06 to 11 when I got medicaled out, but uh, my tour was uh, 09 to 10 in Iraq. Okay, okay. I was at, I'm at Bragg. Well, it's not Bragg more for Liberty, but I served at Bragg, and I started in the 82nd, then I went to support group in uh, Special Forces. Oh, nice. I was a uh, golf 230th out of uh, High Point. I was a National Guard. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, King. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, we were, uh, we actually, my unit, believe it or not, had self sustained themselves twice in Iraq, and I got to go on their second tour, so that was pretty cool. Nice, we got a lot to talk about, brother. We definitely got a lot to talk about. I hear you, man. I hear you. So, I want to hear about this video game you got, man. What's up? What's up with uh, that? The, the video game's called uh, Black Point BR. Um, I'm actually the co founder, um, the founder's called Justin uh, Manley. Uh, with Black Point BR, we are a group of veterans and active duty soldiers that came out of Fort Bragg and Fayetteville, North Carolina, to start creating a game that's within our likeness. You know, we see a lot of games that use our likeness, and they actually we don't really give back to the community like the way we see fit. Mm -hmm. 
So we all came together and said, we're going to um, pull our resources and develop our own studio. You know, so that's what we're doing now. I like that's it. That's awesome, dude. That is really cool. We need, yeah. to, we need to talk. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then um, we got Marines on our teams. We got SF guys on our team. We got, you know, Air Force. It's like the military is really pulling together because um, we're not just creating a game. We're creating a culture. Mm -hmm. And our culture is to impact the esports and gaming industry by empowering not only veterans, um, minorities, and women. Women, of course. That's awesome. Nice. That is nice. cool. So, what is it like a uh, like a Call of Duty style game, but with actual military people, or or what, what's the? <laughs> how does the game work? Do it's actually know? a battle royale. Um, okay. So it's a, it's going to be the first hybrid. You know, I'm not going to get too deep into it for. Uh, for um well the mechanics of it because sure. of uh you know certain yeah, reasons, you want to give out reasons. Great secrets you gotta you gotta yeah. save that <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have a secret clearance or a top secret clearance for some of this stuff we already know that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so on my spare time besides that um my build communities I actually build a, a holistic community garden where soldiers and everybody come by, we teach them how to uh, grow natural foods. I partner up with uh, some of the autism society. This is the reason why we have goats because they represent on the same frequency in learning. And um, we come there and basically with some of the mental services, we teach men how to cry. So that's what, you know, I definitely want to talk to you behind the scenes about. Dude, Absolutely. that gives me goosebumps. We were just talking about that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> also, I've got to ask because you mentioned it. Are you guys starting a new Star Wars program? Star Star Wars. I ain't say nothing about Star Wars, brother. <laughs> you brought up you brought up the goats, man. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, oh. Goes. I can't <laughs> believe you didn't get the reference. Come on, man. Come <laughs> on. I'm a little late. I'm a little late. <laughs> but, it's still that, early, man. <laughs> yeah, it still is. But um, yeah, with this game, we're gonna we're gonna definitely uh set a new trend with this game and coming in and bringing communities together because this is one of the only games that the community is coming together and say, we want this. You know, usually they'll, you'll see creators create a game and try to market it to the community, but we actually boots on the ground with it and uh, getting our intel and creating a game with the community. That's awesome. That is, now, so is, this, cool. is this only going to be on PC? Is it going to be cross-platform, console? Yes. We're going to start off with PC, and then um, after that, you know, console, and then um, mobile. Cool. Cool deal. Awesome. I like yeah. that. Are y'all working with uh with like console people already, or is it just uh? Um, yes, we have a we have a strong team um led by uh Dan um Daniel, uh he's been working with and publishing games for over 10, 15, 20 years. So, um we definitely got some SMEs uh, for civilians. That's subject matter experts. We definitely got some subject matter experts. <laughs> You know, fancy on us, all these acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we all retired. What, what's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> so we you know, yeah, I always tell people, right? So I was a unique type of individual in the military. And when I started the nonprofit, this is it's this general called General Sean Mahal and rest in peace. Um, he taught me everything I know, you know, out of SF. And, and he was a, a major mentor to me in building not only the nonprofit side, but the way of structuring a company is, you know, running a command, running a, a, a tight ship. So I have to highlight him in a lot of the stuff in the school that we build in. Well, the studio that we build in is going to be in honor of General Sean Mahalan. Oh, nice. Now, is the Very studio nice. itself a nonprofit? No, studio is XAV Studios, which is us. Okay. Um, it's going to be in honor of uh, General Sean Mahalan. Uh, it's going to be located off of Murkison Road in Fayetteville, North Carolina, because eventually we want to actually start bring in i would say some finances or try to make some uh, yes. finances get to these colleges so these kids in the community can start going to school for programming and c plus plus and you know because mm -hmm. a lot of kids in our community especially my community um they feel like the only way to get out the hood is sports yeah you know yep. so we got right. hey, you can make 30 or 40 50 grand just by learning how to code and that's what we want to yeah. do yeah. um absolutely if I can ask you, because it's been a minute since I've been to Fayetteville. I, I mean, a minute. Um, you mentioned, you know, you, you want to bring some money into the community. When I was last there, it was it was honestly, a, and I hate using this word. It was like a ghetto, like straight mm -hmm. up. It, it was it was 
it wasn't bad, but it was getting there. You know what I mean? You could tell that it was struggling in areas and it, it wasn't as good as its potential could have been. Is it still yeah. like that? No, no, it's not. It's uh tremendously change and I'm one of the uh, people in the community that are actually moving forward into that change. Um, I believe that our contract says foreign and domestic. And mm -hmm. when I came here to Fort Bragg in Fayetteville, I noticed that, you know, you had do not go areas for soldiers. And I always said in my head, if I can go to the middle of Afghanistan, liberate people, then my contract says domestic too. So I have a program called Vets for Youth also. And what's a better mentor than a veteran? You know, so we mm -hmm. go into those urban communities and bring and teach them how to shoot film instead of a gun. You know, we start teaching them how to use the left side of their brain a little more. So more when we go in the community and change the community, then we make that difference. But if we continue to say this community bad, this community bad, and we're not being the difference in it and showing people the difference, then we have to blame ourselves at that point. I, I love yeah. it. I'm I'm really freaking out here, Tony. Are you eavesdropping on our conversation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, that's the critical piece that I didn't get mentioned earlier is is mentorship. I think you know, when we were growing up, that was a key piece for my life, anyways, was having positive mentors. You know, kids these days they have negative mentors, if you want to mm -hmm. call them that, which they don't even deserve that moniker. But but yeah, mentorship is key, man. Mm -hmm. And especially for the youth of today. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I think, yeah, we, so when I do my speaking engagements, right, I always say this communication is a key, but comprehension is the law. Sometimes it's not the way we communicate. I study the way they comprehend and then I communicate with them. Yeah. Because if you don't speak that person's language, you're illiterate. You see what I'm saying? Not yep. done. So now people don't understand healing is three parts. You got mental healing, you got physical healing and spiritual healing. I bring all that together because Sometimes healing is spiritual. A kid can see if you're not cut from the same cloth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brother, so, I got to get you on Barracks Talk one Saturday. <laughs> I love you, man. I mean, I, I, I already feel the vibes coming off of you strong. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. If, you're not, if you're not cut from that same cloth, no matter what you say, his comprehension is spiritual. Mm -hmm. So when I come and I, and I do an event, then he speak, he's seeing somebody doing 20 years in prison. And that 20 years in prison gentleman is talking to him. Then he see his future, then he's more likely to steer in a different direction. But that's just one part of it. Now we give you a phrase that I call traction with action. So the first phase, we speak to you. The second phase, we join up with you and we show you how to get out. Because the average person will tell you what to do, but they don't tell you the how. Right. And yeah. with the how, everybody have a simplistic mindset. They'll be like, well, two plus two is four. I don't have that. I tell them to have a formula mindset because when two plus two is taken, then what? You know, so let's go to the square root of 16. Let's go to A squared, B squared, C squared. So any problem that come your way, you have a formula to answer it instead of just thinking a simplistic form because life is not simplistic. Yeah. yeah. And you're reaching more, you're reaching more kids, you know, you're reaching more. You know, Tony, I was an educator and, and the, I think that, you know, the biggest point for me being successful as an educator, I, I taught elementary school and I was an administrator for most of my career, but I taught it for 10 years was relating to the kids, you know, cause every little yes. uh, troubled kid that came to my office, that was me. <laughs> so I could relate with them. I could, I was on the same wavelength. Like you said, they, they knew right from the get go, whether, you, whether, you know, you're going to be able to communicate with them or like you said, cut from the same cloth. But yeah, that, that to me was the key to my success. Mm -hmm. Relating to them, getting going down to their level and, and their understanding of, of the situation. I got a video that I was going to play. Definitely play it, brother. Play it. Play All it. All right. Here we go. <laughs> My name is Justin Manley. I'm the CEO and founder of Black Point VR. Being able to communicate with some of the guys from SF and just hear their stories, understand how much this really means to them as well. And it's just an honor to be able to, you know, work with them closely on this game too as well. So uh, having those conversations has really inspired me even more at this point to, uh, you know, go out and, and go over the top for, for this game. I'm a brag baby. So what I did was call on some of the brothers of Special Forces, the uh, unit that I serve. You know, in Fort Bragg, we're a tight-knit family here in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and we just came together and we just took it to the moon. 
My name is Hector Torres, uh, better known in the sexual operation community uh, as Sabre. Um, my name is uh, Ernest Rob Robinson, um, in the uh, retired uh, special ops for uh, 26 years. My name is Cornell Causey. I uh, served in the U.S. Army for 17 years. I did uh, six years with 3rd Special Forces Group. Going long. And I'm 27 years in the military, and this is the most exposure that I've had. You know, especially you know, with the team, such a great team working together. And with so many eyes seeing the billboard, and it feels great, outstanding. I feel like I'm a superstar now for the first time in my life. It's pretty amazing. That's a, you know, you never take a look at your career and what you've done and like, you deserve to be up there. And a lot of, you know, a lot of mixed emotions about it, but it's still great. Now I have a legacy or something I can be sure my kids or somebody who wants to travel the same roads or kids playing video games can get to take a look at a, you know, how, you know, you know, hey, you can, you too can do something like this. And great chance, great opportunity. I think about Black Point uh, all the time now. Uh, it's, 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 it's like I'm going back into being a kid, you know. Opportunities like this, it doesn't come around often. Yeah. This is, provides a platform for it. I'm all in. I'll tell you everything I did, everything I didn't do, everything I should have done. But I want people to learn from me. That's part of our legacy. Misty. I know, right? <laughs> Great video. I, you know, it's funny because when we started the morning show, we were playing nonprofit commercials, mm -hmm. and we finally had a few guys that wrote us, hey, dude. It's an awesome commercial, but dude, quit kicking us in the nuts right in the first thing in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to mix it up a little bit, you know, mix it up. So, if you yeah. don't mind, I got to ask you, Tony, I'm a gamer myself, and yeah. all these battle royale games I've played in the past five or six years, I hate them. I absolutely okay. detest them. Man, it's not because they're too cartoony, but they've got too much bs in them to keep up with and you know just the online aspect i hate getting in there with 60 other people or, or whatever what sets black point battle royale aside from all these others like why what's going to bring me into it um not to give away too much of our ip but obviously that, that that's exactly what what um what separates us you know the fact that we getting real intel from real gamers, from real people behind the scenes. We're not just saying here and we just giving it out, you know, and um, that intel like stuff like what you said just now, we bring people like that on board with our team. Right. Make them a part of the game. That's why we're saying it's a community's game. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because we want to actually listen to the people that not only is impacting the game, but impacting us as well, you know, so once we start getting things more people start understanding the spiritual level of connecting i would say those dots then we can uh move forward from there but i definitely would like to talk to you and uh have you a part of the team because we like to hear stuff like that in uh future development I, I'd, I'd love to and I, i've got some other gamers that uh that would definitely be interested in saying a few things about, <laughs> about <Royal. laughs> yeah yeah we, and, and you know you know the military we, we'll teach you we'll be like this in the military we, we yeah. got dark humor at the end of the day <laughs> exactly i mean you know uh I, I play with a few guys well we did up until we got so tired of it. It wasn't funny. Overwatch 2, man. Like, it was supposed to be this grandiose blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm done. This this wasn't cool anymore. Okay, you know? Yeah. I'm just That's shouting it. out hello so that they don't think that we're... Uh, we're ignoring we're, them. Yeah, <laughs> ignoring them. Now, how long have you guys been in development? You know what's crazy? Um, We started this February this year really yep 2023 cool. it's just like you know when you start getting deployed and with sappers and everybody you have to um have a certain timeline mm -hmm. certain things 
And uh, that was just one of the things when you bring on a team of subject mag magic experts and experienced people, um, time is, is, is irrelevant at that point, because at the end of the day, your experience makes up for time. Yep. You no. Know? And a lot of people, when they start companies, they started with friends and family, you mm -hmm. know, instead of starting it the right way. Cause they more emotionally attached to the company instead of doing what's right for the company. So, right. Or they um, have a nonprofit and they're like completely clueless. <laughs> and they uh, they tend to ask people that are uh, that you know they tend to ask people who have the same vision, mm -hmm. but don't realize sometimes their vision is blind compared to yours. Yeah. So um, I have a phrase like even when I say that that's on the work the work discipline. I have uh, six degrees of discipline where I teach companies, and one of them is sometimes you have to know how to let go, but you got to know how to fire yourself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know how to fire themselves because they don't know how to let go. So um, you're supposed to build a company that's like even with our company, eight years. Um, every eight years, we want to have a little rotation of the C-suite, you know, to keep it fresh, to keep it energetic and stuff like that. Um, we'll have certain qualifications for the position, of course, but we don't want um, somebody to spend 30 years at, you know, at a, at a position. And then we get that that block, I would say, where... You ever see a lot of these, I would say, developers, they're coming out of college, but they're going against people that have been in experience for 15 years at the same position to work mm -hmm. for these companies. So we want to keep that alive. We want to keep that rotation going. You know, it's just like the military. You know, they keep looking for new recruits. Yeah. New, I was new just recruits. about to say, I just, just, just like we term mm -hmm. limitations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talking yeah. about term, talking about term uh, regulations, dude. Did you guys see what happened with Mitch, uh, Mitch O'Connell yesterday? Again for the second time. Yeah, we just had the blank stare. Yeah. 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 He's a, you see these guys are like seventy five when they get in the office. It's like. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, me and my mom were talking about that, and I was like, I'm not laughing at him. I'm laughing at the fact that they're allowing this because there's clearly something wrong with him, right, whether right. it's dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever. I'm not a medical expert. I'm not going to put in my two cents like I know. Yeah. But the fact that they're allowing that, man, like, come on. It's just I, I look at things in two folds. I always look at things like sometimes because I see our brothers do it too. And mm -hmm. our brothers, they so want to be part of the mission, and they won't tell us they got stabbed in the back last night. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I got <laughs> and you. Go out there and fight and fight, and it's like the love that they have in their mind is not equated to their body and their functions and stuff like that at that time. So it's right. just knowing when to cut the cut the, the umbilical cord at that point, in which a lot of people don't. Even in parenting, you know, people don't mm -hmm. know how to let their kids leave the house. You know. Um, one thing I want to actually express, especially to other leaders, is knowing when to pass the torch. You know, we try, we got a lot of gatekeeping and uh, things going on in many communities, you know, and we don't know how to pass that torch. And then once you, we know how to pass that torch, I think the next generation will understand it won't be so big of a gap. Yeah. And that's what we're doing here at, at XV Studios. I'm I'm sorry to jack your show, Joel. You shouldn't have had this guy no, come no, on. No, this, <laughs> is, I love you. this is what I want. Uh, but going back uh, to Black Point VR, I'm I'm assuming because you know that makes an ass out of you and me mm -hmm. that you're not going to rush this game like some studios, and you're actually going to take the time to make sure that it's what not only you guys are wanting it to be as in your vision, but what the community expects. And yeah. if not exceed expectations. Yeah. And what I'm gonna do with you, Bo, is have a, a Zoom. We're gonna create a Zoom with us, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. show you. I'm gonna open up the doors for our brothers and show you what we're doing. Hey, oh, I love time. you all. Man, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, we're we gonna have a cookout at my house. I okay. mean, I, I live I live in the foothills, man. You gonna come up here? We we gonna have a cookout. We are gonna make a day out of it. <laughs> you know you you know you you, you talk about that. You, I, I'm not joking. I thought about that this weekend. I thought about taking a trip over to New Hampshire, but well, I'm in North Carolina. Oh, you in North Carolina? North Carolina. North Carolina. Uh, I'm just outside of Mount Airy. Okay, okay. How far are you from Fort Bragg? I mean, Fort Liberty. 
Uh, well, from Fayetteville, I think it's a couple hours, give or take. I've not yeah. drove that way, you know, because uh, we, we got something called trigger therapy where we go out or um, men of respect is my uh, my firearms club that mm -hmm. I'm joining with. Cornell um, is the head of that club. And uh, we go out there and teach uh, safety and stuff with um, firearms. And uh, we actually go out there and um, we have a nice little talk. And then um, all veterans group. You know, my brothers that jump, uh, oh, we can nice. do some some jumping if you want out of the plane and stuff. So we got a lot of stuff that we can offer here at, at XV Studios. That we yeah, I got to get my van from the VA, man, because I, I, I got to get <laughs> I don't want to mess up your disability now, so we're going to keep that on the low. All <laughs> yeah, right. right, right, right. I, I got to get my state ID so I can get me some firearms because I'm that guy that if if it's too far out of the way and i know it's going to cause some pain i'm not going to drive that far unless it, it like behooves me to um but yeah man definitely uh the other thing to black point vr i wanted to ask you and i know i keep going you just got me so excited and you video know, game right? like, I'm oh, oh. um <laughs> uh so how if, if somebody wanted to support you is there a way that they can support you right now or in the future other Definitely. than obviously feedback. Um, as you can see, my email is there, Tony Brown at Black Point BR. We actually mm -hmm. looking for um some devs, some um, that's on Unreal Five Engine because this Black Point we, we're doing we work on Unreal Five Engine. Nice. Um, I've seen some good in. stuff coming out of that. Yep, definitely. Um, and we actually want to get with children prodigies, you know, that code as well, and bring them on a team because we want to empower the youth. Okay. And we have some um other things that we're going to do behind the scenes, but most likely just if you have talent um from devs all the way to UX design, a meta human, uh reach out to me, you know, and then uh we can go over what we need and then we can just reach out and build a team that's from the ground up, you know, with the people. Yeah. You know, so that's what I want to do. So Tony Brown at blackpointbr.com, you can reach out to me. I answer all emails. Or you can call me direct at 718-344-7378. Don't answer the phone, too. Don't matter. Man, you put the phone number out there. You're going to yeah. get all kinds of people calling yeah. you. Yeah, I want the big time <laughs> action. <laughs> hey, you, you know, you, you laugh about that, but you'd be surprised who calls you. We get uh, we get messages on the NBR app all the time, live messengers. And I don't know if I uh, delete it or not, but we, we get these kids that literally – Get on there and send us messages. Yeah, like this. I guess was nothing. I didn't hear it. I ain't got no audio on my end either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Okay. <laughs> hey, <trust> me. <laughs> Here, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do it this way. That way you can for sure hear it. I don't know why, but. I don't know, but you guys are cool. Whatever. Uh, if you're seeing this, congratulations. Oh. You, you made it to the fourth wall. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh. Uh, I don't really have much longer here. I'm just kidding. I'm just playing around with you. Uh, I don't know what it's like in the military. Uh, yeah. If you're seeing this message, it's, it's rare. Yeah, and. I like it. So, uh, anyways, so th those are the kind of messages <laughs> that I get constantly. You know, you talk oh. about spam. You talk about I you should see mine and mine. I can't play it on here. I that what you <laughs> get? Oh my god! <laughs> hey, you should hear. So, so I, so me and DV Radio were. We, we play independent artists, you know, artists that aren't signed yet, especially, you know, like Shannon Book and, and Tim Megan and uh, Derek Thompson. We, we, we play those veteran artists. And one thing that I find funny is, like, I'll get these different songs. They're not veterans, but I'll get these different songs, and it's like, oh, my God. I want to say, you know, choke yourself, but I don't. I'm, I, I try to, I try to respond. Hey, you know, that sounds great. You know, we'll put it on the server and we'll, we'll, we'll see if somebody bites, you know, but you should hear some of the music. I 
I, I think I sent one to you, Bo. It was about a guy talking about how making a cheeseburger. <laughs> I think you, I heard that. Man, I, I guess we love know. these days. You'd be surprised. I hear a lot of music out there, and they they making millions just off of choruses now. So, surprise. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look at the Island Boys. I mean, come on, like really, with the uh, Island Boys, the uh, yeah, uh, 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 Boys, I mean, yeah, like really. <laughs> everybody got they. Everybody got their passion, and they it what gets them out of their pain point. That's why I look at everything. Their career right, was right. shorter than new kids on the block. <laughs> oh, hey, I <laughs> blood I think new kids are doing like a reunion tour now, dude. I went to their concert because I had to, and I tell you what, fifty some years, they they've got to be like fifty some years old, and they're still doing the hip thrust. It's like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Hey, with hip replacement, <laughs> right? I mean, I haven't even had a hip replacement, and I have a hard time doing a Saturday night special. Uh, yeah, yeah, it made me feel like I'm back at the cough. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tony, you mentioned uh, that's for youth. Can you expand on that a little bit more? Um, just the same thing I was saying. Uh, have you seen my my nonprofit organization also, which is Southern CC Inc.? We do a myriad of things for vets for autism, vets for youth. Um, vet, vets in film, you know, what, where I take the same music the guys compose and I tell them, okay, since you don't like acting, you don't like being in front of the camera, what I want you to do is let me let play a song and then I use that as a score part of the movie. Nice. So now that's part of suicide prevention. I love it. And like I said, a lot of people in general, like when I went to therapy, um, it was more of a check in the box feeling. Yep. It didn't feel like it was actual therapy. Yep. And then I started tapping into spirituality and different things. And I was like, all right, now I got to understand. I got to heal myself within. But for me to do that, I had to forgive myself. So I had to go and look in the mirror mm -hmm. and talk to the eight, nine year old, 15 year old me <laughs> and forgive myself and remember and recover, not forgive and forget. You see right. what I'm saying? Because if you, if you forget your history, you're going to repeat it. So what will happen is once I see those triggers, the nine-year-old me will remind me how to get through it and it won't repeat it again. So that's what I do. I remember and I recover and I teach um, my mentees that. I teach that in businesses and I go around and I do a lot of speaking engagements. Brother, I love you. I, I know I've already said I love you, man. Love like, you too, King. Love you, dude. Like, no homo. I love you. <laughs> and that's another thing, too. We need to start... People need to start, like, even in my garden, when you see my film, my film came out two weeks ago called The Solace Oasis, and it's men, and I teach them, you got to you gotta have a brotherhood. Yes. If you don't have a brotherhood that's, that can say, yo, I love you, yep. I have to fight for you, I can, these soldiers can hold the world on you, but you could cry on these shoulders too, mm -hmm. you know? We can understand that when people say vulnerability, to me, vulnerability, I always equate to strength. So yeah. what I tell people, when you find people that, you know, exposes your vulnerability, don't let the strength in you deal with the weakness in others. You see what I'm saying? So the mm -hmm. strength in your vulnerability, I'm going to deal with it with strength of healing and understanding. So that's what I come across with, with both of my guys and my, and people under my mentorship. Yeah. You know, every Saturday uh, when we do barracks talk, we, we usually do an hour. Sometimes we do two. We used to start at 10 and go until, you know, midnight, but we started getting old. Um, but, but after every show, uh, what people, what the listeners don't know ever since, I don't know, it was probably like a month and a half, two months in anybody that's on that show when we end and, you know, we do our AAR after action report and all that good stuff. And, and we start to wind down and, and right before we leave, it doesn't matter who's in there. I'm like, I love you guys every time. And I mean it. And you're, you're it. You're you're so right. I I know love. I love you gets thrown around like it's you know smarties at, at the pharmacy. Um, in the military, but, we say I love you, but not in a romantic way. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> but you know, I don't have many people in my life that I give a damn about either. So when I tell you I love you, it I mean it so much. Like I would go through hell. I would go to yep. the depths and the pits of hell for you. Um, but you, you touched on a thing there and, and you mentioned spirituality. I want to, I want to make it clear. Spirituality doesn't have to be like God and stuff, right? It can be yeah. a myriad yeah. so, of things where if you see my speed against, right? So I got 
even in biblical terms, right? You say faith without works is dead. So spirituality, uh, well, praying is how your relationship is with God, your relationship mm -hmm. with the universe. Meditation is your relationship with yourself, how you view yourself, how you look at that person in the mirror. So in biblical terms, faith without works is dead. You got to have faith in yourself and work in the world. So mm -hmm. you can, it's all of one. People always think it's separate. Just like healing, it's not separate. It's the Trinity, all your Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, mind, body, and spirit. You got to heal all three. You yep. just can't do one. So if you your mind is right, but guess what? If you're not eating right, your mind ain't going to be right. Your spirit ain't going to be right. Right. You see what I'm saying? So you mm -hmm. got to have that balance. Even in science terms, your nucleus, your atoms, everything comes in that. You see what I'm saying? So you have to bring it down and understand the basis. Where people at, they skip levels. Mm-hmm. And they want to get healed over day, overnight. And then they wonder why that's not working. <laughs> yeah, wonder why exactly. it's not working. So you do, you can't look for healing outside. You look for support outside to heal inside. Well, it's yes. just like that song by Joe Ellie Roll. You know, um, what? Why? You know, why do I go to God only when I have an issue? Mm -hmm. You know, why don't I go with Him for like praise and stuff like that? I, I forget the song's name, but that's kind of what he he's talking about. Yeah. So when you get into a certain frequency, like on us, there's no issues. Mm -hmm. You start looking at everything as a calling or a lesson. I, I have a thing I tell people um, who tell me they can't do it or they've done oh this, that, God. or the other. Oh yeah. God. Look, I, I, to everybody I know, I'm their Dr. Phil. Like, I need to start <laughs> getting paid for people's <laughs> therapy sessions. Um, sure. But I'm also honest and I'm straight and to the point and more times than not, I'm, I'm blunt and I tell them what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. Right. Mm -hmm. And it'll get to a point where they just keep going back to a circle where I can't do it. I can't do it. And I'm like, look, I can give you a toolbox right now full of tools, right. but you have to be the one to choose the tools that you're going to use for that job. Yeah. So what I have for that, right. And then we keep using my speaking engagement because I speak Casey. Well, You're good, brother. <laughs> but, um, I call it a, nat a lateral crutch mentality. This is what all of us got to be a lateral crutch, have a lateral crutch mentality because we don't want to be enablers, right? Mm -hmm. so with a lateral crutch mentality, a crutch will hold them up, right? A ladder will get them to the next level, but it doesn't work unless they use it. So I'm going to give them the option of the ladder and crutch and I'm out, but they have to figure out the time to use it because I don't have no time to enable anybody. You know, on that form. Are you a farm? It says farm.org. DDfarm.org. So it's not an actual farm. It's a 501c3 nonprofit in Gilson, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a long-term rehab for homeless and addicted veterans. And mm -hmm. right, right now, we can't do anything because our set system needs to be up to coding standards yeah. of today. And it's screwed up. So that's what uh, that's all about. <laughs> the community garden that I built for my nonprofit. That's why I teach the garden classes and stuff like that. I actually built it because it was in the heart of a food desert and people was walking miles for 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 groceries. You know, oh, wow. So that's where I teach people in that community how to grow natural foods. But the way I do it, I tell them instead of growing broccoli, we gonna call this Experian. We gonna call this TransUnion. We gonna call this Equifax. So now they learn how to grow the credit while growing healthy food because you can have generational wealth, but it doesn't matter if you don't have generational health. So we have that here too. That's why I saw the farm. I wanted to talk to you about the community garden that that this I built out deep, there. Also. Man. <laughs> oh man, dude! Honestly, one of the things that we do at the DV farm, which, like I said, it's only farm in name, we use animal therapy. We mm -hmm. use. Um, they actually are starting to do a garden. They they were testing it last year into this year to make sure that they done certain things right and this that and the other. Uh, and what the DV farm does is they teach you responsibilities so you can reintegrate back in the society. Because when you get addicted to anything, the first thing that goes is your responsibilities. You don't care, right? When you get down into that, that deepest, blackest pit of that tunnel of drinking or popping pills or doing street drugs that I'm not going to name because I don't want you guys to get thrown off the air. Um, <laughs> you, you automatically start forgetting how to care for yourself, how to care for your family, how to do everyday activities. And that's exactly what we at the farm do is, well, I don't because I'm in North Carolina. It's kind of hard for me to <laughs> teach anything in New Hampshire. You do it um, with spirit. 
right um but that's exactly what they do you you learn how to feed chickens and goats and ducks and then you learn how to plant tomatoes or green beans or whatever and you're on a time schedule and you got to upkeep and you got to do the weeds and and all that good stuff so that's that's what uh the farm does essentially and what you what what i do with that like so you have to have an impactful moment you mm-hmm. know it's some hard so what i do with my mentees and my guys we go to we go to foster care and we go to not shelter on foster care orphanages uh, juvenile detention when you go to foster care right and they talk to the foster care kids and they see those seven eight year old kids having the yes. same problem that yes. they have at 40 or 50 is mm-hmm. it, hard you know what i'm saying so in my i have kids that have been molested at, at 19 years old mm-hmm. you know boys yeah you know so when they grow up what happens they become the molester yep so if we don't come together and teach these kids or be a mentor for these kids even in that aspect and get to them at that early age then it's the hero supervillain effect they both got their parents killed but one turns into a villain one turns into a hero because you got hurt people hurt people but you got hurt people protect people from getting hurt man guys that hurt people protect people from getting hurt because i was hurt but at the end of the day if we don't express that hurt to the youth because we keep thinking these kids aren't they mind is not up here, mm-hmm. but they spirituality is up here because you can go in the house and put on a poker face and your child will be like, hey, daddy, what's wrong? You see what I'm saying? So exactly. we got to connect to the pain and spirituality of the youth and talk to them, and express them. We hurt, too, and we understand your pain. And then they'll change our direct directory because of them after them. Man, I don't believe in God and religion and all that good stuff, but I will say this. Joel asked me to come on this show this morning and it almost didn't happen because I got Crohn's and Crohn's likes to, you know, play Taco Bell night every day whenever you're around. (laughs) And and I'm going to tell you what, I made this show for a reason and I, we getting hooked up. We, you know what, we we going on dates and everything. I don't care. I'm going to up. Pause, Brooklyn. (laughs) <laughs> oh, what kind of flowers you like tony <laughs> you want a box of chocolate with that too <laughs> oh <laughs> hey high speed <laughs> <laughs> no man I, I i love everything from from not just the video game and the aspects that <clears throat> excuse me you're implementing into that and you're obviously wanting feedback from the community but the nonprofit and the way you teach not just adults, but kids, because people aren't doing what you're doing. And if they are, it's on such a small scale that it's going to take forever for it to actually get a, for it to do its rounds. Right. Mm-hmm. And man, we, we getting hooked up. I'm telling you, Tony, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm here, King. I'm here. I'm here. It's a beautiful oh, yeah. thing to watch. <laughs> yeah, and, and then we want we. This is what we we need. We need to actually um, start promoting each other and not just yes. yeah. get together at roll call or at the Friday. At you know when we're doing a debrief, we need to continue it throughout the weekend. We know the battle buddy system. We know. I agree. Right. I agree. I I really think that there we have a lot of veterans out there because I I used to be one. There, I think we have a lot of veterans out there that are, are like, hey, look at me, look at me, and be inspired. And we need more veterans that are helping veterans, hyping them up mm-hmm. instead of us hyping ourselves up. Because if we hype other people, then people won't look at, oh, he, that guy is just full of himself kind of thing. You know. And, and then one thing I, I have to mention is the – um. We got to start empowering and standing behind um, women because that's what yes. I want to say. We have female rangers. We have female teachers. Like we we start the, the youth and the kids and everybody need to see how men support women and look up to women in certain ways, not as in a God concept because you yep. know, people take it out of context. But yeah. the relationship between a man and a woman, that's not their mother or that's not in the boyfriend or girlfriend category, just in a yeah. business or in a respect category where – this woman been through so much. She's my inspiration, you know, mm-hmm. and get me through it. Cause everybody think that when they see an inspirational figure, it has to be a male or yeah. it has to be this, 
you know, women go through so much as human heroes, we can go through that too. <laughs> yeah, because we don't want, I don't want, like, even when I tell my young boys, you know, a lot of mothers raise their child to love their mother. Mm-hmm. And when you go out there looking for a woman, guess what? She's yep. not going to be your mother. Yeah. And, so now and you, you know, go out there looking for your mother. So I teach them the relationship between a man and a woman, like, hey, you got to respect her. You got to understand that she has different emotional points and different pain points like that. So, yeah, you have to and, understand that she's gonna have a different bringing up than mm-hmm. you do. Yeah. I learned that the hard way. Like I, I my first marriage, eh, first marriage, it's my first, first marriage. marriage. You know, she was brought up, eat in the bed, eat in the grocery store, eat and watch mm-hmm. TV, and that's it. It's not the way I was brought up. I was brought up, you know, all we we. We watch TV together in the living room and we go and we sit at the dinner table at the kitchen. That doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. So this is why I always say um, do it as a, a friend because I don't go into like the relationship standpoint. I always say look at movement as an inspiration figure to get to the next level or to understand. So when you bump into or when you try to get to see a woman, you can start off with respect. You don't yep. have to start off we respect and understanding because a lot of people, men and women, because I always say human being, I don't really go into the category, but men and women, you relate to their pain and yeah. you're not arguing with that person when they upset, you're arguing with the, the pain that might be a nine-year-old. So they resort with a nine-year-old mentality and response and a tantrum because they, they, you put up a defense mechanism because you're attacking them. So mm-hmm. once you relate to people pain, then you can move to the next step and go from there. The, the two things you touched on there that, and, and Joel, guys, I'm sorry, I keep jacking <laughs> nah, <laughs> no, on today. Um, but no, the two things you brought up: uh, veterans helping veterans, mm-hmm. and females. <clears throat> For those civilians that don't know, the veteran community can be a cesspool. It, it honestly can. Um, we are our worst enemy at the end of the day. And I've seen so many veteran organizations and and just veterans in general knock other veterans because and I, I know a lot of it is out of jealousy and i know a lot of it is out of retribution or whatever but if you're knocking down a veteran organization or another individual veteran because of something they've done that's probably not their fault you're not helping the veteran community in right. any way you're not and and it goes to deeper levels of that sometimes and i always tell this to people in business Sometimes you do too much good that yes. you make people look bad. Mm-hmm. And that makes right. other organizations and nonprofits look bad. So this is why I always come through with a community aspect as in uniting everybody together for a common goal, you know, not just uh, doing the goal and then isolating everybody else out. Like I have tons of nonprofits here in uh, Fable, North Carolina, because it's a veteran community. And I'm all about us coming together as a collective with the civilian sector, with the veteran sector, with the police sector, with the with the street sector. And we just doing events and building our own community because I go with the like minded, you know, man, Tony, where you been all my life, man? <laughs> where, where have you been? Um, all right. Is, 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 before we ask another question, because we're running single, out of Tony? time. Are you single? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it is my, my social media is at Mr. Tony U Brown or www.tonyubrown.com. Hold, hold on, Tony. We, we got you. We're, we we want to do the time to shine because okay. that's that time. This is the time to shine, baby. It's the time to shine. Okay. All right, so what we got here is your time to shine. What that is for is anything that you feel like we've missed out on, anything you wish you would we would have asked you or that you just maybe forgot to put in there, anything you want to talk about these last two minutes, go ahead and uh, this is your time to shine. Okay, one more thing I wanted to talk about that. Um, go and talk to, your super, talk to our superheroes. My superheroes is children under the spectrum or people under the spectrum. So we have a community that I would say not just veteran community. We have an autism community that don't doesn't get a lot of recognition and shine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I want to highlight that. And I hope people want to go. I want people to go out there and highlight that as well. Um, That's one of the things. That's my last checkbox off my list because I'm just checking everything we talked about, making sure I hit these talking points. But besides that, um, you can reach me at Mr. 
Tony U. Brown on all my social medias from IG all the way to Twitter. I'm willing to partner up. I'm willing to, to join together so we can not only build a studio, but all we could change our communities. That's the biggest thing. Only way we could change is unity and love, not division and hate. So let's go. I'm ready. Let's do it. That's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Perfect. Before uh, before we let you go, Bo, did you have one last question? Uh, it wasn't a question. It was just about the oh. email thing, man. He does, you know. but he doesn't have a ring ready, so. <laughs> it was it was just it, it was just about females you know and, and uh you know the relationship and all that i've got five really good females that came to mind when you when you mentioned that and i see them all as sisters uh in one way shape or form exactly um and they've all been through something horrendous but they're all different all five of them and yeah. i i treat them like one of the guys, but at the same time, I also, like you said, I take into consideration when I'm talking to them or joking with them or what have you, uh, their experiences and who they are. And if they yell at me, which a lot of people yell at me for no reason. Um, but, uh, um, I, I'm, I sit there for a few seconds before anything comes out of my mouth and I'm like, where's that coming from? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like you said, mm -hmm. cause, uh, we don't know what somebody else has really been through, even though we know, right. They've told us, um, but we don't know mentally, emotionally, physically, how that's impacted them throughout their years. And I, I just, I wanted to thank you for bringing that up because people don't realize that when they're talking to not just females, but people in general, what somebody has been through and how they can react to you just by something simple that you said or done. Or well, just even a job perspective, like, just seeing somebody like I'm in it, we all in mil we're in the military. So we know when we see like a, a ranger, right? Or a female ranger, automatically in my head, I'm like, she been through a lot. Because yes. it's, not, it's, it's the little bit. I know for a fact what people go through, just what I went through. But yes. if I see her that made that ranger or made that SF or made, I'm order automatically giving her praise. Like yeah, you did the impossible that yeah, people yeah. think is the impossible. And I want to show you that I love you, sis. And keep going. And thank you for being my inspiration. And, you know, I don't think we tell people we're proud enough, proud of them enough for what they've That's done. True. No matter how small it might be, they could be a waiter or a waitress at a restaurant. Yep. But look at how far they've come in life through all the trials and tribulations. You need to tell people that more. All right. mm -hmm. Definitely, brother. Definitely. We, we definitely got to do that. And I'm going to hit you up here in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got I'll share the info. I'll that, share the info. The romance yeah, yeah. continues. <laughs> and a lit dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we all know Carolina Paul. We know Carolina. <laughs> right? <laughs> you can cancel your match subscription. Tony, thank you so much for being on. I all really right. appreciate it once again. Yes, Ladies sir. and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Brown. He is the co-founder of how do you how do you say it again? What X is Black Point BR? Or yeah, there Black we go. Point. I get those so mixed up already. <clears throat> thank you so much for joining us, Tony. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, world, and love y'all, brothers. Uh, let's stay connected, Bo. Um, I gave the world my number. You already have it too. So <laughs> let's start setting up a Zoom meeting this weekend, and I introduce you to the team, and then we'll go from there. Absolutely, brother. I'll hit you up soon, man. All right. All right. Yeah. Love you, man. Love yeah, you, man. brother. All right. Take care, Tony. All right. We're going to go on a music break. Bo's going to stay with us. Um, but we're going to, well, not really a music break. This is, this is know, our time. Some alone time. <laughs> <laughs> Where my lotion at? <laughs> Sorry, man. I don't have a poncho lighter. You could use the other side of the room. Uh, <laughs> for everybody else, we're going to do the tribute to the troops. So whatever you do, stay with us. Don't go away. You're listening to the station that's giving veterans a voice. You're listening to NBR, The Morning Show, and DV Radio. So I don't, I don't know how to tell this story. Well, you got to, Joe. You tell the American people what these men did here. You tell them how my troopers died.
Thank you for listening as Military Broadcast Radio proudly presents its tribute to the troops. Today, we honor and remember Captain Matthew Rowland. Captain Rowland, on August 26, 2015, a special tactics officer assigned to the 23rd Special Tactics Squadron was wounded and killed in action while attempting to pass through an Afghan commando-controlled security checkpoint that was located between Camp Bastion and Camp Antonek. Upon arriving at the checkpoint, an Afghan interpreter got out of the lead vehicle and briefly met with the Afghan commando guards to provide the password for the day. As the interpreter made his way back to the vehicle, One of the Afghan commando guards raised his weapon. Simultaneously, Captain Roland, who was the driver, threw the vehicle in reverse and notified everyone on the radio of an insider attack. This was followed by the Afghan commando guard firing into the vehicle, where Captain Roland was killed. His actions allowed other occupants of the vehicle to survive the attack, for it gave one Army Operational Detachment Alpha member enough time to raise his weapon in the vehicle and engage the Afghan commando shooter. For Captain Rowland's actions, he was posthumously awarded the Silver Star. Captain Rowland's military awards also include the Bronze Star, Purple Heart, Meritorious Service Medal, Air Force Achievement Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, and the NATO Medal. Today, Military Brotherhood Radio proudly remembers and honors Captain Matthew Rowland. And it's the glory A hundred stripes, a hundred stories It's the pledge of allegiance on the 4th of July It's them handwritten letters from home It's them sleepless nights alone It's his newborn baby he left with his wife Mr. Red, White, and Blue
Hey, welcome back to the morning show. You're here with me, Mr. Jack Blaze, H Train, our special guest V, and our even specialer guests, Bo, Bo. from DV Radio. Yep. So what a great show, guys. What Dude, a great interview. And you know, it's so crazy because the time just goes by so fast. Yeah. It really does. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the final thoughts with Bo. Five, five, five four. Mission strap in. It's the two minute warning. Two minute warning. What we learned today. Are you not entertained? Sponsored by Operation Goodboy.com. Use code at checkout. Military discount radio. All right. Awesome. So, Bo, I can't tell you how much of a pleasure it was to to have you join us. Absolutely. Anytime you want to get on in the morning, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, the invitation is always open. I appreciate it. And the same goes for all you guys for Barracks Talk, even though I know most of you probably go to bed at like 6 o'clock in the uh, evening. Um, 5.30. 5 <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's always a pleasure to get on with you guys and especially the fact that I had no clue that you had Tony coming on. That was, that made it even better. I got all giddy. I think I woke up then. Um, yeah. <laughs> finally woke up. Uh, I but yeah. Throw a plug in and say that the barracks talk is an awesome show to be on. Uh, great guys. Great conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so I highly recommend if you have the time, uh, go on barracks talk. It's a fun interview. Oh yeah, that. you know, and I tell you what, I gotta ask. I, I'll, I'll I'll tell you what I get, learned today, but I want to know what what what's the what's the mysteriousness of you never showing your face? Is that is that like your signature? No, You're just right. you hear okay. my voice. That's all you need. That's all you okay. need. There I mean, you, go. you you don't need to know what I look like. Right, I mean, right. Hey, I, if anybody wants to know what he looks like, he will show you for ten thousand dollars towards a septic system. I don't know. It might go. It's, it's a little bit higher than that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we will auction off his face. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all better open up them pocketbooks wide. <laughs> I'm better have some deep, deep. Deep pockets. <laughs> well, I don't know. We saw how easy it was to romance you with Tony, so everybody's like, "Okay, yeah. you know." <laughs> Might have to for Tony. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I appreciate and uh, it, it, appreciate you guys allowing me to come on. And obviously, it's an honor and a pleasure uh, to work alongside you all and and just the networking in in, in general. It's it's. It's wonderful. It really is. Like Tony was saying, you know, uh, veterans need to help veterans. And that's what DV radio is all about. And that's obviously what MBR is all about, which uh, is why we're obviously working together. Um, but that's why DV radio works with the people they work with, uh, because they have the same mindset. They have the same goal. And I, I can't say enough about everybody we work with uh you can find out more about that on dvradio.net uh you can look at the dvr family um and and find out who we work very closely with uh it's it's no secret <laughs> um we get no sponsors sponsorships from any of them we get no pay from any of them uh we we love each and every one of them and we trust their products if they sell products and we trust what they're doing if the, uh they are doing something for veterans and their families and that's why we work so closely with them and you know, and uh, we've been talking about it. We're going to create a, a new station called MBR Talk, and I believe on that MBR Talk, we're right now. I'm working with the board, <clears throat> making it a, a stream where you can cuss, so that we can have barracks talk on. You know, on <laughs> I don't on, on our station. Look, I don't, I don't know if you guys can outdo us yet. Uh... <laughs> I don't think we have that filter installed yet. <laughs> I, I actually, there was somebody a few years ago, they were actually counting the, the number of times I dropped the F-bomb because I just say what comes to mind. I don't care. Like, it will happen. Obviously, I'm not 
uh, blatantly racist or, you know, uh, self-harm encouragement or anything illegal or anything like that. Everything's fun. We're joking and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I get pretty blunt. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have to point out really quickly the most, to me, the most realist scene I've ever seen in a, uh, military movie was there's a scene in hamburger hill where a guy talks about how he went home on leave like emergency leave and he was sitting down at the table and and you know he was so embarrassed afterwards because he was like mom can you pass the effing potatoes and you know and just every other word and blah 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 and and to me that that hit like that resonated because I, I know when i came home on leave my dad like pulled me aside and he was like hey i know you've been talking like that you know, your whole time. My dad's a vet too. Right. And, uh, but you know, maybe chill out a bit at yeah. home. Yep. <laughs> Years. V, having you in the studio again, always great. And, you know, I didn't learn something today on this, but what I did learn this week is when you look at yourself, look into the mirror, when you smile, you look like Woody Harrison. Dude, I've heard that <laughs> and I'm like, I just embrace it now because I've been in denial for so long. So <laughs> yeah. I love Woody Harrelson. So yes, thank you for that. I mean, you might, you know, they have that woman on TikTok that looks like Jim Carrey. It's not a relation. You might be able to make a TikTok of you just talking. I'm the, the I'm the I'm the Woody Natural Harrison killer. look alike. <laughs> Woody Harrelson's evil twin, long lost. <laughs> Downtown Brown. I still think Woody Harrelson's the evil twin, honestly. <laughs> I think so. I, and, I, and I thank you for that. <laughs> you know, well, I recently read, talking about Woody Harrelson, that yeah. his dad was a hitman. Like a legitimate, really? like, yeah, hitman. Really? Well, I know Jackie Chan's parents uh, worked for the Chinese uh, government, and they were spies. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And see, these are all things we've learned today. You know, I always wonder that. How do people get a hold of hitmans, or how do people get a hold well, of dude, like, it's easy. drug dealers and stuff like that? I mean, it's easy. It, you don't go on Craigslist. You go in the dark. You, you used to be able to. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I'm dead serious. You used to be able to go to Craigslist, and they had ads for hitmen. That's how people used to get called. Magazine. Yeah, exactly. If you're old enough to remember that one. Huh? All right. Well, we, <laughs> uh, we, we, we got to wrap this up before, before Bo leaves us. Um, do you have anything to say? Uh, just check out dvfarm.org. If you can donate, please. It's appreciated. Don't put yourself in a position. If you cannot donate, do share and spread the word to help us get that 25 grand for the septic system. Uh, barracks talk every Saturday live unless otherwise notated at 8 PM Eastern standard time. And we also have every Tuesday, every other Tuesday at 8 PM Eastern affinity protocol from affinity innovations, Inc. Uh, it's a cryptocurrency as well as a blockchain technology company. Um, mm -hmm. But again, thank you guys for letting me come on and oh, hijack your show because I, I just got know. all giddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's no worries. That's, that's great. And uh, me and you will uh, we'll, we'll 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 talk offline, brother. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, yeah I love you guys. I appreciate it. Yes, Always well. welcome. All right, everybody. That's the show today, and we're gonna play the closer, and we will see you. Next Friday, Bo, do you have a guest for Barrett's talk this Saturday, or are you still looking? Uh, I'm supposed to have a guest, but you know, you're all, you guys are always welcome. Open ended invites. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you guys next Friday. We're not here for us, we're here for you. And everybody said, giving Getting our veterans a voice. voice. See y'all. That's the show for today, everyone. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with an all-new show. And remember, you can listen to us again and again. The podcast of this radio show is available right after we go off the air tonight. Anywhere that you can get your podcast episodes. And thanks for joining us today. I'd like to take a moment to talk about something close to my heart. Military Broadcast Radio is doing incredible work to support our veterans and bring their voices to the world. 
They rely on your generous donations and your dedicated volunteer hours to make it happen. I encourage you to consider supporting NBR in any way, form that you can. Use this QR code that's attached to the picture, or you can go to our website at mbradio.us. That's mikebravoradio.us. To learn more about how you can donate or volunteer even just an hour a week from your home, help make a difference in the lives of our veterans. Because once again, we're all here for you and not for us. We're giving a veterans a voice.